Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Center. So in this episode, it seems we kind of span upon Mosswood a little bit more because we learn... Obviously, like, everything circulating around it kind of deals with this labyrinth. In particular, this labyrinth that looks like a Y, but it's kind of like, oh, you kind of have to use your imagination. And, like, there's more to it than that. Because uh, it's always also talking about the fact that, like, Dr. Poole has, like, this diary or whatever he had written. Where it's basically like, oh, yeah, in this labyrinth, you're always being chased by the Minotaur. And the only way forward is, like, basically to go inward. You have to go deeper into the labyrinth. And then you find out it's not the Minotaur you're facing. You have to face yourself because you are the Minotaur in that situation. It's a whole thing. We end up finding out that there's a dude who used to run Mosswood named the Beacon all those years ago. We find out later when his name is Lionel Jeffries, and he kind of wrote a lot of books that their work and their sessions, all everything that Mosswood kind of is, kind of sprawled from these books because he was like a psychiatrist or something at one point in time. But then a lot of his work kind of got thrown to the side because allegations of abuse and stuff came out. So. Which begs the question, because we do see bits and pieces of things that kind of make you go, okay, there might be something to that. Because there's the whole thing that Hannah finds this recording and ends up watching it. And it's like, oh, they're asking this guy about what dream he had or whatever. And it's like, oh, like, it, it's something that's dealing with his dad and he kind of snaps and beats someone up. Like, the question is, is that his daddy's beating up or is that just someone who's there? Like, was he kind of put like, a psych... Like, it does seem like it's almost like a trance type of thing where it's like, oh, he gets, like, he beats up whoever's in front of him because maybe he's interpreting him as his dad or whether that legitimately was his dad sitting there. But everyone in the group's just sitting there not doing anything, even Marin. So it's kind of like, maybe they're, because it's kind of interesting because that's something I actually threw out there last season about Cora's situation that maybe someone put her in a trance. Like, the reason why she did what she did and was acting things out was because she was in some trance and that music was to trigger. It's like, you know, maybe, you know, him being a psychologist and this being very, like, all about people's minds and stuff like that, that might be the case. Um, can we end up finding out that there's a lady named Carmen who was connected to all of this who, like, 15 years ago, she had a male practice suit against Dr. Poole because she was going there for an abortion, but it ended, he ended up removing her uterus, and that wasn't what she wanted. He kind of dead at on his own, and then later on filled out paperwork to make it seem like, no, that's what she wanted. So the point, the thing, maybe whoever she was with during, and when she was in Mosswood and got her pregnant, maybe that's, maybe it was kind of frowned upon that she got pregnant, impregnated by certain someone, but then it's like, if that's the case, why was the Julian thing allowed? I mean, to be fair, because we do know that no kids are allowed, but that's the thing, like, why Julian and no one else? Because she had to have gotten rid of her kid because Mosswood said so, but why was... But if that's the case, then why was Vera able to, you know, keep Julian, even though we still were in that process of being like, oh yeah, Vera can't be his mom, so there's that old thing. I mean, because the biggest question is, like, where is Marin then? Like, what's going on with all that? I mean, they were told about some purple lakes. I don't know what that's supposed to be like. People they have problems with, they just dump them in this lake. It's kind of what it seemed like Carmen was kind of insinuating. At least, like, it was like, oh, go to Purple Lake. Not unless it's like some... Maybe it is kind of, you know, it's probably going to end up being a thing where it's not literally a lake. It's just called that. Or maybe in her delusion, she's calling it a lake when in actuality it's something else. Uh, but Or maybe it is a thing where it's like... That's legitimately where the bodies are buried type of thing. I doubt it, but that's kind of where my brain kind of goes at first. Which that takes an even more interesting turn when you think about the fact is that Vera tried to make it seem like the reason things happened with the whole Adam, her, and Julian situation is because it's like, oh, she became unhealthy, like had an unhealthy infatuation with Julian because she wasn't able to have children herself. But it's like, once again, it's like, isn't it, you know, why... Why is it only Julian there? Why aren't there other kids? Like, obviously, it seems like that's kind of a big no-no there. The fact is, that kind of might comment on Bess's situation, too. Why she wasn't able to have children, because they probably kind of forced you to have your uterus removed. And so, I don't know. Once again, like, why? Maybe it had to be someone specific that got Marin pregnant to have Julian. The reason why Julian was kept, because it's like, oh, maybe he's a special kid or something, because it's like, oh, you know, maybe this has something to do with the beacon, uh, uh, Lionel Jeffries. Maybe he's potentially the dad. That's what I'm kind of getting inkling for, but we'll, you know, we'll wait and see. 
Um, and speaking of Marin, we do kind of look a little bit in the past of her and Hannah. It seems like she had her biggest problem with Hannah, it seemed like, was because Hannah would like kind of kiss her and stuff like that. And she's like, I thought you said we were like, I think it's like she's like, I thought you said we were going to do it. And Hannah's like, oh, OK. And it's just like, there you go again. She's like, what are you doing? Like, the fact is you're lying to yourself. I think like. Marin kind of got more comfortable being who she was because it seems like this whole thing uh, about Mosswood is kind of tapping into feelings that people kind of keep buried down, like those that are kind of deemed kind of like, oh, no, don't show those feelings, kind of keep those buried deep inside. It's all about bringing the balance. That's why, like, for Vera, it's like, yeah, like, Julian's so special because he's a child that balances both the light and the darkness. He embraces and represents both sides you know it's, that's what she said the beauty of julian is and i think marin kind of got to that point where it's just kind of like no like you keep burying stuff you're not admitting the truth and then she's kind of like what so i'm wondering what like because she says it later on to hannah's dad i mean at least that's what hannah's dad says we don't know what she uh what marin actually said to him but it's like i can't be friends with hannah anymore because she's changed she thinks i'm the one that's changed but she's the one that's changed so is it because like because I think it's kind of her interpreting it as, like, the fact is that Hannah won't admit her situation. Like, she kind of hides it. She's embarrassed by it. She isn't willing to admit who she is. And maybe it's not even just the whole gay situation. There's much more to it now. Because even now, as an adult, it seems like, I don't know, it seems like there's a lot of stuff she seems to keep buried or not talk about. Especially when it comes to her dad. Because a conversation came up. Because she's like, yeah, I think everything I did back then was because I was dealing with mom's death and her dad's, like, yeah, that was that was a couple years ago. Almost trying to be like, there's no way it was connected to your mom's death. That was years ago. That was your, you know, young teenage angst or something like that. It's kind of what he was potentially kind of making it seem like. And then she's like, yeah, there's a whole situation with you. And he was like, once, like I said, years ago, and just kind of immediately changed the subject. So it's kind of going with what Marin was talking about before. Neither one of them is very good at being open about it everything like i see whatever it is they're just kind of bottling it up like hannah kind of wants to talk about it but her dad just kind of pushes it aside just because i guess it's the only thing that kind of keeps him from uh, breaking apart because he seems like he's kind of very like chipper to a certain extent so i think it's like all that bad stuff he's just kind of pushing it down and it's gonna be super unhealthy and stuff like that but maybe that's what hannah's kind of doing too and maybe this whole situation is kind of making her embrace some of that stuff she wasn't able to embrace then or even before these uh, circumstances, you know, in present day, like before this case happened. So she wasn't really ready to deal with. So I'm curious to see like what that really that dynamic really is for her to say that Hannah's the one to change. It does seem like she's the one that's changed. But I guess it's because Hannah, like you know, maybe Hannah was a lot more comfortable before about their whole situation. And maybe she got more and more weird about it. Or maybe it's because they were friends and stuff. And then she wanted more and at least kind of tiptoed to that direction. But then maybe in her mind, it was like she kind of treated Maria like, wait, no, no, I'm not like that. It's not like that between us. But then it kind of, it, you know, not, not really sure what she wants in the end. Which is interesting considering the fact is Marin's the one who always kind of felt like she was a loser because she's like, yeah, here I am running around town doing the stuff that I'm doing and you, you're going off to college and stuff like that. And so it's just kind of an interesting conversation. A lot of other interesting things came up in this episode too. There was the whole, uh, uh, once again, I'm assuming he's like the DA or the prosecutor, whatever the case may be. He wants Harry taken off the case because he's like, Harry already, like, he's trying to do to the Julian case what he did with the Cora Tanetti case, which is like, do good, figure out that there's more to this. But for him, it's like, no, I don't need you complicating, throwing some wrench in the situation. It's like, we have a clear cut case, let's leave it at that. But even Hannah's like, maybe we should bump it down to family court, you know? And he, he's like, no, I don't want my constituents thinking I'm going easy on it. It's like, no, you don't want them to think. You want to know them to know that you're going full force on anything related to Mosswood. Once again, that's the buy. She's like, yeah, you wouldn't want people, you know, it's a good thing to have Harry around because the last thing you want is people saying like, oh, you're biased, you know, so because once again, it is like, once again, once it spread around town that this became a Mosswood thing, that's definitely what sparked him to be like, we got to make an example of him just because Mosswood's always probably those cultish freaks. Even their front gate has been smeared and with a whole bunch of stuff written on, well, drawn on it and the word cult written in it. So whether they are or not, we have to continue to wait and see. They're an oddball, old, oddball group. But once again, that's because we're getting the full picture from the outside, getting only little peaks and windows into their situation. I mean, granted, when you look at things that kind of been set up so far, you're kind of like, yeah, it don't seem like the most great place. I mean, it seems based on Adam and Bess's situation, like it's a place that they were legitimately trying to run from. It's kind of interesting because it's where Hannah ended up finding that, um, 
storage unit and that place uh the book was being sent the um that labyrinth book uh it was a storage unit near Niagara Falls, which is kind of like wondering what that whole uh, Julian, uh, Adam, and Beth situation was all about. And the storage unit was in Julian's name because it was like, oh, on the name was Julian Walker. Also, who got the who got the um, tape from Carmen's de- deposition where she kind of went to the authorities about everything that happened to her, but then everything and everyone kind of got turned against her, like making it seem like she was crazy. She's got these markings on her feet. So what that's connected to, whether that's like the therapy or whatever she's going through, or is there something more to that? Like it seemed like a small detail that Harry was focused on that. I kind of get the feeling like maybe he knows what it is and maybe it's a clear cut thing, but I just didn't really understand it, but maybe it's going to be something like, Oh, later on we could cut back. Oh, she's got that on her feet, you know? So we'll see. Um, it's kind of interesting because Harry hurts his foot later on and Vera kind of takes care of her. And part of me was wondering like, is she going to do something that's going to leave the same markings? At least we don't know for now, but still. Cause what was interesting too is I, and it kind of goes back to what I was thinking about the whole uh, Lionel situation is the fact is that Vera was kind of not Vera. Um, Carmen was like, oh, can I have a picture of him, please? I guess to be fair, that's also because it's like they were in Mosswood and he's such a high figure. He's the beacon. She's like, I don't get to keep anything. Let me keep that picture of him. So it kind of shows you what kind of sway he had over those people there that they kind of feel like they need him, even if it's just him in a photo. Like, we don't know where he is. It's just kind of like, because Vera just describes it as he's gone beyond that, but you don't really know. What does that mean? Like, oh, he's dead or he's just off the beaten path or like what that exactly means there was this interesting thing that went down earlier in the episode where we got to look at um harry's past to a little extent like after the fire happened people putting it out his mom is being taken away you see a small crack across his face once again it's like to me last time kind of made it seem like maybe harry was the one that kind of made the fire happen maybe he wasn't the way things have gone down and talked about so that's what my thought process kind of was last time but now i'm kind of going well I'm still part way there, but another part of me is like, nah, maybe it is like his mom was just wasn't in the best condition to take care of him. And now it's a situation of like, he was happy because now it's like, oh, I get to be in whatever. Like, we don't know to what extent his mom's condition was like what that really manifested itself as. Was it abuse or whatever, like physical or emotional, like something I kind of feel like it might have been a physical thing, but maybe it won't have been like I said, it's still very unsure about it a lot of stuff going down with harry's past like that so we had julian talking to harry even though he knows his mom wouldn't want him to because his mom won't give him the answers he wants because obviously his mom's kind of very cryptic about a lot of stuff because she's like no like you, you i'll get you out of here i promise i'll get you out of here it's like you know obviously they want to do an evaluation because of stuff you said and did last time it's gonna make our little self-defense play a little harder but no we'll, we'll get to it like how long will i be in here you won't be here alone but harry he was blunt with him it's like yeah those charges each will, those counts will each go for about 15 to 20 years. So at least it would be 30 years before he can get out. But then Harry's like, oh, your lawyer will do better for you. And he's like, will you be my lawyer? He's like, it can't work out like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The fact is Julian still made that call anyway, kind of shows that he f- believes more in Harry than he does his own mom. Well, quote, unquote, mom. Um, which Harry kept that a secret from Vera that he was talking to Julian, and I doubt Julian's going to say anything about it, but he even tried to be like, yeah, everything Vera is doing, she's trying to help, you know, in her own way, you know, get you out of this situation and stuff like that, which he could have easily tried to throw Vera under the bus, but he wasn't, because I think for him, it's like, Vera's doing the best she can in her own way, so it's like, don't try and... You know, maybe keeping his mom in a good light in his eyes might keep him strong under his circumstances. But Vera invites him to Mosswood and even lets him go through the um, work. Because now we find out, like, the work that we've been hearing so much about is sessions. Like, the therapy session we saw between her and Julian in the first episode. So it's like that with different people. Um, And now... Um, Harry wants to undertake it himself leads to him kind of getting lost in the woods while she's kind of off on her own she's like oh I knew you'd catch up to me eventually it's like that's still a dick move but you kind of feel like it's all part of some twisted there's like some psychological angle to this whole thing kind of leaving him in a vault because the whole thing is like it's not about 
confrontation. It's about invitation. Like we only go as far, only bring up certain things if people say it's okay. Because they kind of both butt heads because they're both people wanting to be in control. Because she's like, oh, you like being in control. He's like, oh, that's something you might know about. Because uh-huh. he's a little cranky and he'll snap at her. And she's like, oh, there's that cool streak I knew was inside of you. So she's trying to get to... Because it's interesting too because when she tied that um, thing around his swollen um, ankle... She's like, is it too tight? He's like, no, I don't know if that was it. Like, part of me wonders, is that supposed to be kind of a reference to what he was going through in our first season where he was having that lady kind of like strangle and hurt him? I wonder, is that what that's supposed to be kind of referencing? Like, is that her tapping into Harry to some extent, knowing that he likes a little pain, that it's not too tight? Just at asking that and stuff like that just kind of makes me wonder, because that's something we haven't even dealt with in this season at all with Harry, because obviously it seems like, you know, with looking at his fingernails and everything, that might be something he's kind of let go, because of helping out Cora kind of help balance him out, but maybe he's not 100% balanced back out, too. He's still got his own issues coming back to his hometown doesn't make that any easier. Um, then there's a the whole situation with him and Vera. I'm like, is this about to turn? Because she's even talking about some sexual stuff between them. I'm like, is this going to be some ploy for her to use to kind of like work against Harry to be like, oh yeah, use this to help Julian's defense or something? Like it becomes like a conflict of interest type of thing. Like you're the investigator in this. Like, that's what I thought it was, but I obviously it's, I don't think it's a sexual thing. Like, I mean, she is saying that, but I don't know if anything actually happened between them. But basically, it's her tapping into the stuff that Harry kind of keeps buried, like, kind of his, all of his light and his dark, like, you know, he keeps buried. It's like trying to bring it to the surface, but we see, like, the kitchen on fire, him standing there and everything, once again, kind of being like, Maybe he did do it. I once again, you don't know for sure. But what is interesting is when he like wakes up, he finds himself in the motel room. The way everything is, it seems like I'm assuming that's the same motel room, just the way it kind of looks a little messed up. So I'm thinking like, oh, that's got to be the whole motel room that the whole Adam and Bess and Julian situation happened. So it's like, how did he get there? He's wearing his shoes. His shoes have dirt on it. So it's like. Was he in some kind of trance that time? Well, like, what went on? What did he do in between that time? Between the whole... Because last time with that Vera thing, that was at night. He wakes up, it's either morning or afternoon. So there's a good chunk of hours that he lost. And, like, what happened in that time? What did he say? What did he do? Like, what did Vera potentially make him say or do? Like, most... I don't remember if he actually drunk any, drunk the tea or not. Maybe he did, I don't remember. She made the joke about it not being the same thing Julian poisoned Adam and Bess with. So it's like, I don't remember if he actually drunk the tea or not. I wonder if that had an effect or was it... Well, because it's also that thing she uses. I'm sure it's like part of a... Like the... That thing that's making noise. Like it was during... Like it was during Julian's session. So whatever it is, probably a combination of many different things kind of makes you more susceptible. So it might not be that she's necessarily doing anything extremely bad. She's probably doing stuff to be more shady or trying to legitimately help Julian out of this stuff. So that might be what that is. Maybe it's her to get the maybe it's her way to get the answer she needs to find out how much they know about in this investigation and stuff like that. Who knows he might have let slip about the whole we think Julian is uh, Marin's son and not yours, which is something Hannah ended up telling her dad, which might come back to bite her in the ass because her dad might run off and tell somebody about that. I don't know. But I guess at the same time, it's kind of like, no, it's okay to tell my dad because he's not going to tell anybody else. But the fact that she went out of her way to tell her dad something like that kind of makes you go, why? I guess it's just because like she's asking a lot of questions about Marin, and I guess that's like a starting off point or something. I don't know. A lot of stuff we still don't understand, uh, but uh, taking some very interesting steps forward with everything that went down this episode. I'm interested to find out what this is kind of all about, like what this whole Lioness, um, Lionel um, Jeffries thing turns into, what's um, that storage unit that's got clothes that belong to Julian because they're supposed to be a little boy's clothes, plus his name being on it and everything, what's that all about? Was he being kept there at some point in time? Was that them actually legitimately going to try and take him to Niagara Falls? And were they just sneaking some of his stuff off there? Because it was only until recently that someone stopped paying for it. And then there's also the person who took the tape from that place in the first place to place the tape, the deposition, uh, Carmen's deposition, like someone took it before Harry could get it. It was like, all she said was a thin man. So beyond that, a lot of stuff we have to wait uh, 
to get uh, more details on. I'm very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.